that is not me. I don't want to be a take. I don't want to take part. I want to go and win medals. So I went for it, and then it didn't pay off. So yeah, I didn't get to do another heptathlon after 08, unfortunately. So um, sadly, yeah. So and you obviously don't know that at the time. So yeah. What did you do? What did you do for London 2012? Were you around? Did you watch it? Ah, oh, got paid a handsome amount of money working for Sky Sports for two and a half weeks. <laughs> oh, there you go. Not too bad then. Well, you did get a gold so, then. <laughs> that, 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 it was really hard because I was in the studio right opposite the stadium in Westfields. We had a rooftop, with brilliant, yeah. brilliant, brilliant studio. And I was there like every day, twice a day, um, you know, both sessions. It was me and Marlon, actually, Marlon Devonish. We were there all the time. Uh, I think John Midgen and Ed Moses. So we were all like interactive, we all had, we all partnered up. It was really, really cool. So yeah, I mean, I remember commentating because Sky wasn't able to show the Olympics because on BBC, but then, so when the race was on, you know how they do the football now, like, you know, someone's in the, and they're talking about what's happening. All right, talking to, like you're talking to Jeff Stelling, are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I was, well, <laughs> the, Chris, the Chris Kamara of the Olympics then. <laughs> <laughs> so, so but some, you know, there were the, present, the sports presenter was there and like Kelly, you know, what's going on? And I'm just explaining the whole race of Jess Ennis winning the gold and, I really didn't want her to win in terms of like, because I was gutted, I was jealous. And, you know, it's like, because at that time, I was jealous of not being there. Um, and so at your home games, but then I was commentating, but I was crying because I was so happy. So I was like, oh, I'm like, I don't know how I feel. I'm like, I'm amazed for her because the Golden Girls won. Absolutely fabulous. And then I was very, very like jealous of the fact that I wasn't in that stadium. So I'm here, the stadium's here, everything's happening there and I'm just commentating here. And I'm like, I just want to be over there. And I just, you know, so that kind of hurt um, a lot. Um, but ultimately, it, yeah, so that's what I did. Um, that, that, is, that is incredibly honest to be that because I was going to ask you about that, about whether you would be, like a part of you would be a little bit jealous yeah. of, of Jess. But I, it's, 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 any, yeah. I had this, I, I've had, I, any athlete who says they're not jealous of somebody in their own event when you can't be there because you're injured or for whatever reason they're not jealous about another athlete performing well they're lying because your nature as an athlete you are competitive and that creates like and you want to be there so there has to be some not that you're unhappy for that person that's not you're just jealous of not being part of that or not getting the opportunity. So I was really hurting so much of not being part of that whole story and not being in in that story and potentially winning a fourth medal for myself. Because, you know, if I hadn't been injured and I had been fit, I was never winning gold. That, never. I knew that. But I definitely had a shot at a medal if I'd have maintained fitness and not had the injuries, 100%. And that would have been a great swan song for me, but it just wasn't. The, and so that little dream of a home Olympics had just, you know, mm. gone, gone all right. It's all because I called the, white, the Olympics a white elephant in 2005. It came that kind of reared its ugly head, didn't it? <laughs> Karma. <laughs> oh, Karma, go back. <laughs> um, oh, dear. No, I didn't say it was. I said it could be if it, the legacy yeah. wasn't right. So, yeah, um, yeah. Okay. but yeah, um, yeah, but yeah, but ultimately, it's a, that's sport and that's a nature sport and that's competitiveness. Um, yeah, yeah. What was your What was your relationship like with, with Jess? It was uh, you obviously referred to as the tadpole at the time. It was quite a, quite a nice bit of banter you had going, but was it a good relationship with Jess? Uh, yeah, we got on really well. You know, like she. So all the way from so when did we start? Comp- competing against each other since like 2006 so yeah we, we either shared we shared a couple of times um she, she beat me once at european cup but not at a champ so i do have that kind of she didn't beat me at champs um, <laughs> <laughs> my only thing i can hold on to for the rest of my life um but no so yeah we did and you know that that term was taken out of context because i was making a rubbish analogy of a situation saying like she's going to be brilliant like i'm this frog i'm the, i'm this person she's just basically going to be she's the baby and she's just going to go like going to be a brilliant she's when she when she's born and when she's like but when she turns into the butterfly she's going to be immense so much better than me and i would said that like you could see the talent there it was undeniable um and that's what i kind of meant but it came out wrong and it's quite interesting i think there was a I think in her book, she said I was unsportsman. I did it in an unsportsmanly way. I've never unsportsman. I've never got an unsportsman in bone in my body. And I would never, it was, it would have been kind of a, 
it came across wrong and I, I apologize I didn't mean it like that this is how I meant it but obviously you know yeah shit it's happens so, 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 so. <laughs> but yeah so yeah we do so if I sit yeah she, she you know we're not best friends we competed against each other and we wanted to beat each other and then we were injured at this at the times when each other wasn't injured so we never really got a proper match I think if Jess had and myself have not been injured and uh, to get we've been healthy between 08 and 10 I think that's where you would have seen really good battles and then after 2010 she did just went boom like she went stratospheric and where I would have been falling off a cliff so we we just about started to meet in 07 at the end of 07 08 would have been a battle and 09 would have been a battle and then 10 she it would have just we were just going in different directions because where we were in our careers she was 10 years younger, well she is 10 years younger than me so you know then fair enough you know you know the younger one wins and the, the one who has more ability is going to so yeah crack on but did, did you ever this is a bit of a left field question but did you ever um uh you know you're, you're an athletic person you're an all-rounder you're, you're fit uh but your body was just starting to creak and crack a little bit did you ever get attempted to do like a, a Rebecca Romero and try something like rowing or track cycling I think have a crack at that you might know this already yeah I I did a lot when I was injured I did a lot of cycling um, and I worked with a physiologist up at Loughborough Steve Ingham who Jess actually worked with and we did a lot of um what bike and gold standard bike so I did a one of the bike tests that the cyclists do for the talent ID um and I think on both of the bikes, so it's like a six second speed, speed test at the time. And then there was a test where you went up in um, 10 watts, I think, or five watts, or 10 watts every 10 seconds, like increments. Like, so it's an endurance. How many watts can you keep going for? And both tests, I think I, my power output was quite high. And I think uh, potentially could have gone on to do some kind of track cycling but that was in 2010 and so it would have been a bit too late for 2012 I think to make the transition but it wasn't my heart wasn't there so yeah I did a lot of cycling got my cleats <laughs> so I, I knew how to push and pull on the bike you know I, I was really fortunate I got to learn some tricks of the trade of riding the bike um, but I really love cycling and track cycling was one I really wanted to do um, but I think if I had another five years in me I might have given it a go um, but yeah, then I thought I could kayak. <laughs> so I was at oh, really? I thought I could do, oh my God, no, I was awful. I thought <laughs> I'd give it a go. I had no ability. That That's just, you know, that is just another level of ability. I had no strength. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd love to have given track cycling a crack, really, to be fair. Um, but yeah, I, I just didn't have that time. And I think actually a lot of athletes, could do track cycling because you do cycle if you're injured you do a lot of biking and if you get to learn to if you learn to cycle like if like endurance run, runners learn to swim and that's hence why they go and move to triathlon if you learn to do things properly actually and put the power and what you do in, in in track and field into another event you could be quite successful I think track athletes are quite lucky they can probably maneuver more because of the impact they do and they're fitter the, the ability to move is probably greater um so um but yeah i would love to have been a track cyclist wasn't to be <laughs> hmm. all that timing yeah so years after years after you finish you finish now and you became a three-time olympic medalist uh when was this 2018 or so yeah, 2018. When certain, yeah. suddenly you know you the, the, the four by four got a medal due to two retrospective you know bands of yeah. uh, of uh, uh, athletes that were doping at the time um and you're obviously, and you got obviously the bronze medal from Heptathlon in, in Beijing as well. Um, how do you how do you deal how do you deal with that? Is it is it a thrill or is it just a bit? It's is, is it tainted? I mean, it is tainted, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. How do you process uh, it? It's it's like having four seasons in the space of like ten seconds. You know, you're happy, you're angry, you're sad. Uh, you know, like you just hit all the emotions, and then you think about what happened. What would it have been if I'd had this at the time? How would my life have been different? Would I would I would have made different decisions? I definitely would have made different decisions because uh, I thought I wasn't good enough at the time. Hence, probably why I got so injured after Beijing. So, like, you know, what's the ripple effect to that? What What would my life have been? You know, could I? I would have definitely 100 percent a lot more money. Um, and I'm not. I don't do my sport for money. I did it to win medals. But there would have been that would have been like the the carry you know the the stuff that comes with being successful even more successful. So um, yeah, and now like 
I mean, I have my medals in a drawer, like, and I was showing someone not too long ago, and like, you've got your medals in socks in the drawer. I said, yeah, because they're at my desk when I'm working. And sometimes I can look them out, get them out, and they're there. If I put them in a case, yeah, they're there to look at, but then they're not, can't hold them. You can't just feel them whenever you want. So, and I can't take them somewhere. But yeah, if you, they're, then, you know, they're great memories. And uh, I'm very happy I finally got them. And like, there's many athletes out there who are who duly deserve their medals and never get them. And I just feel very fortunate I got my medals that were due to me because of the hard work that uh, anti-doping authorities did to retrospectively test samples. So, you know, a lot of people say not enough is going on, but there is behind the scenes. There truly is. It's just that there is a time limit. It's 10 years. And if, if they're, you know, now what we want, anything now past 2012, I think we've had the last one now with Anchuk recently. Um, you know, it's now you you have to that that ten years is twenty twelve now it's twenty thirteen. You, you can't be tested. But like, there's people now who should have had medals and they just don't have them. I just I actually just feel quite fortunate. I got what was mine. I mean, I still should have won a gold medal. But <laughs> if I if I if I hadn't had seventeen weeks of injury leading into that games. I probably should be gold Olympic champion in my in my mind I should have and so that'd be a disappointment however you know not many people say they've got three Olympic medals mm, no so, and I, I and I'm you know I don't go out and I, I don't walk around saying I'm an Olympic medalist I'm not that person um but I also like to acknowledge every Olympic event I did I've won a medal Maybe I should have nice, done more. Nice way to put it. Yeah. Maybe, I should, maybe I should have ripped my microphone at Sky Sports and ran <laughs> over to the Olympic Stadium. I would have won a medal, no. Um, but yeah, so, you know, there's part of me is like, I've been a very successful Olympic athlete when it mattered. Ma- it mattered. If I'd only ever won those three Olympic medals, I did it when it mattered. Because yeah. um, that's all people care about. They don't care about the other medals. But no one cares really about worlds, Europeans, Commonwealths. But in, re- in reality, I get called three-time Olympic medalist and then sometimes Commonwealth champion. It's not, it's always Olympics. So you always lead with that and that's all that matters really Absolutely. in the world of sport. Not that I, everything matters to me, but you know, to the to the greater world, it's the Olympics that matters to everyone. Yeah, absolutely. So we've covered doping a lot. You could talk about, obviously you're still, still an outspoken. Um, yeah. About doping. The other Can thing I just gonna... change what you say, Chris? I'm not outspoken. I'm an advocate for anti-doping. So advocate. outspoken is like, I. I think it's just changing the rhetoric of that where I like, no, I'm a, a massive advocate for clean sport. Okay. Uh, am I guilty of, la- <laughs> of lazy journalism there, of using media terminology? Sorry. That's sorry, okay. Kelly. I forgive you. Wrist, <laughs> wrist, wrist, wrist slapped and uh, understand. Okay. The other thing I was going to ask you about was um, about um, trans issues in sport and what your thoughts are on that. And what, where, where do you see that, that whole debate going? I'm female sport we're getting uh it's a really tricky subject and I don't think any answer I give there's always going to be uh and I have to be careful with my views because obviously who I work for now um but I, I truly believe in the fairness of female sport and biological female sport and you know, you're born a female, you compete a female, you're born a male, you compete a male. And I, I understand there's so many different grey areas in between it all. Um, you know, and I'm an admirer of people who are constantly battling that. So, for instance, Sharon Davis, every day you look on Twitter and there's a thousand <laughs> tweets that she is. She must be just on this phone tweeting. Like, I admire her. Like, it's... A, but she's doing it for the cause. And do you know what? In a generation's time, people are going to be mightily thankful for somebody like Sharon because she is just not letting it drop. And no, and we shouldn't, and no sport should. And it's just such tricky water to, like, you can't tread, you, it can't tread lightly. You're always on edge. 